What's up, you magnificent bastards? I am Chuck of the Defenders of Cobalt, and I have got a super basic entry-level video for Zoyander, a little introductory video. You know, in the last one, I walked you through creating a character. Uh, you had a blast. It was great. Don't you fucking lie to me about it. But this one, I want to go... I want to take it real basic on this shit. How to do skill tests, like first chapter of how to play, just in case you're confused about it. I know that book's a fucking beast. So we're going to talk about that, how to make a skill test. You know, you sit down at the table, GM says, hey, roll me a, uh, a standard survival test. And you're fucking panicking, like, I don't know how to do that. I don't know what things I need to look at to even figure that shit out. Well, I'll walk you through it. It's pretty simple once you get the basics of it. So in a, any skill test, and there's three things you're going to look at. First off is going to be the primary attribute associated with the skill. So for... All the skills here, uh, each one belongs in the little category for a primary attribute. So you just got to find out which primary attribute is associated with the skill you want to roll. So I'm going to use an example. Say you set down, GM says survival standard, right? So you know you're going to do a survival test and it's a standard difficulty. If we look at survival here, the three things we got to look at, right? We got to look at our primary attribute. That's 49. So make a mental note. 49 is your the start of this little formula. Next up, do you have a skill rank in this? Skill ranks are something you would have gained through character creation. Uh, and then your profession gives you access to certain skills. You can unlock those skills using RP. Uh, and as you progress in the game, you'll get access to more skills. And then in, when you move into the higher tiers of gameplay, uh, you'll get access to multiple ranks in a single skill. So we're looking at survival here. So my primary tribute 49 cool story my skill rank i have a skill rank in survival the way skill ranks work is they add a plus 10 to your primary tribute so i have a 49 for perception i have a skill rank in survival so i get to add a 10 to that so my survival skill is kind of it's a 59 uh, then we got to look at the difficult most character sheets have a little difficulty chart on the bottom if yours doesn't you can hit up page 18 in the revised core rule book uh, there's a little difficulty chart there but for a standard skill test there's nothing it's a zero so it doesn't add it doesn't take away gm says roll me a standard survival test you're like shit cool my perception's 49 i got a skill rank in it that makes it a 59 that makes 59 my target number i have to match or roll under that 59 so if i go to my dice roller i roll a 27 cool i rolled under that 59 I passed that skill test. Uh, I succeeded at it. Now, like I said, this, the, those three are the primary things. There are complications on that, just like anything in life. The first complication we need to point out is going to be our peril condition track. As you move down the peril condition track through gameplay, it's going to make you start ignoring skill rank. If I was on the peril condition track, if I was at the ignore one skill rank and I made that survival test, I wouldn't get to add that plus 10 for my survival skill rank. It would just be my perception, which is 49, plus nothing, because I have to ignore my survival skill rank, plus nothing for the difficulty. So it would just be, I would have to roll 49 or less. And if I roll that shit out, I got an 82. I fucking failed that skill test. Shit happens. Uh, and that's really, I mean, that's as basic as it gets for a skill test. You find your primary attribute, you add any skill ranks to it. If you have a skill rank, and if you're not ignoring that because you're because of your peril condition track, and then you look at your difficulty, add those three together, then you roll your percentile die, and you have to roll that or less, and you succeed. If you roll higher than your target number, you fucking fail. Um, easy as that. Why don't we do another example here? I want to do a toughness test uh, because I don't have a skill rank in toughness with this character. So, you're trying to do something. Your GM says, cool, roll me a toughness check, but I want you to make it a challenging toughness check. Here's how you make sense of that. First, you find your primary attribute. Primary attribute for toughness is brawn. So we take that 43 for brawn. Uh, I don't have any skill ranks in toughness, so I don't get to add anything for that. Uh, an important note about peril here is if you don't have a skill rank, 
and you're down on your apparel condition track, it doesn't affect you, right? So even though I may be down to, you know, ignore one, ignore two, ignore three skill ranks, that's not going to hurt this toughness check. So it's going to be a 43 for my brawn, plus nothing, because I don't have any skill ranks in it. But the difficulty is challenging, and challenging is a minus 10. The math on that would be 43 for my brawn, plus nothing for a skill rank, minus 10 because it's a more difficult challenge meaning my my target number is going to be a 33. So I have to roll a 33 or less to succeed. Ooh, I rolled a 27. I succeed on that challenging toughness test. And that's really it, right? The skill test, it's the, the kind of the core mechanic, the most basic mechanic. Everything's kind of built around it, even your, you know, your attacks, your combat. Uh, simple melee, if you're poking someone with your fire-hardened spear, that's a simple melee skill test. So you just take your your skill, so in this case, simple melee, you add your primary attribute, so 41 for my combat. Uh, I do have a skill rank in simple melee, so I get to add plus 10, so that makes it a 51, and the GM would assign a difficulty. We're going to say it's a routine test, so that's a plus 10. So 41 for my combat bonus, 10 for my skill rank in simple melee, plus 10 because it's an easy test, it's a routine test. So 41 plus 10 plus 10 gives me 61. To succeed in a routine simple melee test, because I'm trying to stab someone with a spear, I have to roll 61 or less. I rolled a 55. Uh, so I would succeed. And in this instance, not only would I succeed, I critically succeeded. Uh, which gives us a good segue into talking about criticals. Uh, Zweihander percentile system does use critical success and critical failure. Uh, and it's a pretty simple system. If you roll double, so in this case I rolled a 55, that's a critical. What makes it a critical success or a critical failure is if you roll above or below your target. For a combat simple melee, my target was a 61. I rolled a double. So for this combat, my target number was a 61. I rolled under that, so I succeed, but I rolled doubles, which was a 55. So it's a critical success. And kind of depending on what you're doing will determine what happens with criticals. So that's explained on page 19 of the revised core rulebook and everything else. And your GM will kind of help translate what the critical success, critical failure mean. Uh, so if I had that 61 as my target and I rolled a 77, okay, cool. I rolled doubles. It's a critical, but I rolled above my target. So that makes it a failure. I critical fail. Um, and also if you roll a one, it's always a critical success. If you roll a hundred, it's always a critical failure. Uh, so that's kind of how criticals work in Zweihander when you're making skill tests. Uh, the next little segue here is going to be assistance. Uh, you're not alone. You're usually a member of an adventuring party. And if you're trying to make a skill test, your friends can help you out. Uh, there are some rules on that uh, explained on page 20 of the revised core rulebook. And it's the assistance feature in this. It's pretty fucking simple. If someone wants to assist you, they have to have a rank in the skill they're assisting with. They have to be available to assist you. They can't be, you know, mid-combat and say, oh yeah, I assist him on moving this fucking boulder. No, they actually have to be involved with moving the boulder with you. And the, the way it works is they just give you their tens die. You roll your percentile, you roll their tens, and then you can use whichever tens die uh, is the best for what you're trying to do. So usually you'll take the lower of the two tens dies. So let's say someone's assisting me. They're assisting me with, I don't know, a toughness test to move a boulder, okay? Uh, that could also be an athletics test. We're not gonna get in the weeds here. I roll my percentile. They give me their tens die to roll with it. My target number was like, we'll say a 33 in this. I roll a 65. I fail, but they gave me that tens die and I rolled a two, a 20 on that tens die. I can get rid of my 60 and swap out their 20 and make it a 25. Because they assisted, I succeeded. So that's kind of how assistance works. Once again, page 20. Another thing that can affect your skill test is flip to fail, flip to succeed. Uh, mainly, I want to talk about flip to fail here. Because you see some of these skills have little asterisks next to them. That means it's a special skill. In order to perform a skill test in a special skill, you have to have a skill rank in it. And if you don't, there's a, a punishment, essentially. Uh, and that is called 
flip to fail. And it's a, a really simple mechanic. Let's say I am making a, a skullduggery test, okay? Uh, we're going to say it's a standard skullduggery test. I don't have any skill ranks in skullduggery, but it is a special skill, and it uses agility. So my target number is going to be a 46. So my primary attribute, agility, is 46, plus nothing because I don't have any skill ranks. Standard difficulty has to be 0, so 46 plus 0 plus 0. 46 is my target number. But it's a special skill, and if I don't have a rank in it, I have to flip to fail. So, 46 is my target. I roll my fucking die, and it comes out to a 25. Cool story. Usually that would be a pass. But on a flip to fail, you take your tens die, and you take your, well, your singles die, and you flip that shit over, and you have to take whichever is the higher. So 25 would pass, but since it's flipped to fail, I have to turn that into a 52. I failed my test. There are situations and certain skills you'll have where you'll actually get to flip to succeed, where it's the same thing. If my target was a 46, I rolled a 52. Uh, oh wait, I got flipped to succeed. I could turn that 52 into a 25. Uh, mainly it's talents and traits that allow you to do that. But for flip to fail, if you're trying to make a skill test and a special skill, one of the skills with an asterisk, you're going to have to flip to fail if you don't have a rank in that. Okay, I kind of touched on this just a second ago. Some of the things that can affect this shit are talents, drawbacks, and traits. Uh, they'll affect your skills and shit. Um, sometimes good, sometimes bad. Sometimes you'll get to flip to fail, sometimes you won't. Uh, so, example, if you have the book Mangouche and you're looking at Pioneer, it has an ability that lets you flip to succeed on athletics tests. That's fantastic. Uh, or if you have a character and you took the drawback, uh, was it crop ear or whatever the name of it is, uh, any awareness tests you use or scrutinize or eavesdrop, anything where you're using hearing as the driving force for that skill test with the crop ear drawback, you have to flip to fail on that. So it's a, a penalty because, you know, your ears fucked up and that's kind of, that's really all the mechanics there. You got skill tests, the difficulty how criticals uh, work, how assistance works, flipping your results. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is your fortune pool. That's on page 24. Every time you sit down on a session of Zweihander, the party gets fortune points. You get one fortune point per player plus one extra fortune point. So if you have a six-member party, you're going to start with seven fortune points. Fortune points are explained on page 24, but the thing I specifically want to get at for skill tests you can expend a fortune point to re-roll a skill test as long as it wasn't a critical failure. So if my target was 46 and I rolled a 48, that's not a critical failure. I could expend a fortune point. It'll let me re-roll it, but I have to take whatever that re-roll is. So I could turn that 46 into a 77, a critical failure, and I'm stuck with that critical failure. Or I could turn that 46 and do like a 25 or a 33, and I could get a regular failure or a critical failure. Uh, so you can use fortune points as a reroll as long as it's not a critical failure. You can't reroll crits. So that's the mechanics of it, right? You should have a, a decent grasp of it. It's just your primary attribute plus skill ranks, uh, as long as they're not canceled out by peril, and your difficulty rating. Uh, you add those three things together, you roll your percentile. You need to hit that number or less. And if you do, you win. And if you don't, you lose. And easy as can be. Uh, but while I've got your ear hair, ear here, not your ear hair, I don't want your ear hair. That's your business. We do need to talk about uh, etiquette when it comes to skill ranks. And the, the Zweihander Revised Core Rulebook does do a good job of kind of explaining the etiquette of it. But we can go ahead and talk about it a little more. The, the thing you want to do is you don't want to tell your GM, I want to make a survival test to see if I can track this animal. What you want to do is you want to, you want to RP this shit, right? You want to say, okay, I know that the wild hog wandered off in this direction. Uh, I want to go through and I want to track and see if I can find the wild hog, see where it went. I want to check for footprints in the ground. I want to check for scratches on the bark of trees as its tusk rubbed against them. I want to look for broken twigs and shit. Uh, and I want to see if I can find this wild hog. Um, that's a lot more fun than just saying, I want to do a survival test to find the fucking pig. So you'll explain what you want to do and your GM will say, okay, cool. 
To do that, you're going to need to roll a survival test, and you're going to need to roll it at this difficulty. From there, you have all the information you need from the GM. The, the proper etiquette, as explained on page 17, 18, is you say, okay, my survival test, my target number is going to be at, uh, we're going to use survival here again, standard survival test. 49 plus I have a rank in it makes it a 59. So you say, okay, my target number on this would be 59. You roll your die, and then you just tell the GM, I passed, I failed. You don't need to tell the GM, oh, I rolled a this, because uh, the GM doesn't have to translate that shit. It's really nice about Zweihander is that it puts that power kind of in your hands as a player, where the GM just says, you know, here's what your, here's your skill, here's the difficulty. You say, cool, here's my target number, and I failed it, I passed it. I critically failed it. I critically passed it. And that's really it. Um, I don't know. I have recorded this video. I don't know how many fucking times. Uh, because it's, you know, it's a really basic function of Zweihander. And it's really hard to explain it right without getting into the weeds. So I hope you fucking like this. And uh, if you do, and you want to help me make more videos like this, uh, you can scroll down a little bit and you can hit that Patreon link. And you can kick us a little bit of cheddar. Because uh, we're broke as fuck here at Defenders of Cobalt, and anything you can give us will be greatly appreciated in our efforts to provide cool new entertainment for you to watch. Uh, and speaking of our Patreon, I do need to give a shout out to Adam Rose of Grim and Perilous Studios, the kind of lead rule guy for Zweihander. He is our currently our one and only Patreon. So if you want to join our Patreon, uh, you'll be in great fucking company. So yeah, kick some cash our way. It's appreciated. I don't know. That's it. I plan on making more videos in this series, just introductory shit to Swyhander. So keep an eye open for that. Uh, currently, we're streaming every Friday, alternating between Joe running a 5th edition campaign and me running a Swyhander campaign. So head over to Twitch, give us a follow, maybe give us a sub, and uh, come hang out with us Friday nights. It's fucking great. Yeah, but you now know how to make skill test in Zweihander. Uh, and until I see you again, start fires, do drugs, and tip your bartenders. Deuces.